be discussing uh, some supportive care studies and particularly one abstract that, that was prevent, uh, presented. So what is your um, experience in general with oral mucositis? And um, I know it's such a challenging problem for patients and uh, how do you currently help manage side effects of uh, oral mucositis? It's it's so tough. It's one of the worst side effects we give people with chemo radiation is that mucositis, basically the, the worst sunburn of your life, only on the inside of your mouth that can make it difficult to swallow, difficult to speak. Um, and so far, you know, it, it affects almost everyone who gets chemo radiation. There have been studies looking before at different ways of managing it. None of them have been particularly effective. So there was one study, the Roman study, looking at a, a vasopassum, which I, I really need to learn how to pronounce, um, but it's an IV drug uh, that's given daily with radiation therapy with a goal of reducing oral mucositis. So people getting chemo radiation as part of the standard treatment got the 60 minute infusion daily before their radiation. And they looked at the incidence of severe mucositis. And they did find a decrease in severity of mucositis for patients receiving this. But I think there are a couple caveats to this. This is a tough treatment to give. Um, if anyone listening has received chemo radiation, you know it's already almost a full-time job to come in, get your chemotherapy, get your radiation, and then to come in for an extra one hour infusion every day on top of that, you know, that's a lot more time to ask someone to spend in the infusion center for a, a benefit that was pretty modest overall. Um, also, the drug itself has some side effects, um, some nausea, some vomiting. And for people on chemotherapy and radiation already, more nausea and vomiting is, I think, the last thing anyone wants. So while I, I really think it's a great idea to do these studies, to look at ways of reducing the toxicities of our therapy, um, I don't know that this one was a home run, but I am curious to hear your thoughts on it. Um, how did you interpret the data? Yeah, I couldn't agree more with, with your feelings about it. And it's, it's we ask a lot of our patients receiving chemo radiation therapy, particularly on their chemo days that can be very long with cisplatin. And so adding another treatment that takes up more time in the infusion chair, particularly with how busy and how many patients are coming in through the door, I think that it just makes it, it makes it hard. And so um, while the data shows that we can at least decrease the rates of severe oral mucositis, I, I, I'm hopeful that maybe there are going to be different formulations that might help and um, I'm aware of an ongoing study that's looking at a tablet that goes in the um, um, in the mouth and that dissolves, and so that could be potentially easier for patient tolerance. But um, yeah, it, I think I applaud um, ASCO for giving this an oral presentation and um, really, I think, supportive care and trying to make our patients' lives a little bit easier with treatment is so critically important. So um, yeah, I'm. I'm glad to see this data and hopefully we'll see what, what comes about in the future. Yeah, I think we make people, you know, the wonderful part about head and neck cancer is so many people were able to cure with our treatments, but we do make people pretty miserable along the way. Uh, so I do really applaud ASCO for giving a, a pretty big spotlight to this important field of, of trying to remediate some of the symptoms we give people after, with chemo radiation. 